I purchased this car in 1999 and pretty much did a full restoration, paint, body, interior, engine, wheels, uh, changed a lot of nuts and bolts on the car. The car was imported into the U.S. Um, in 1999 where I purchased it from um, a seller in Monterey and then I started uh, beginning to do the restoration on it since then and it was completed in 2005. My name is Kelvin Chung. This is my 1971 uh, Mini 1000. The engine right now is an upgraded uh, 1275 uh, from the original 998 um, has about 85 to 100 horsepower originally it was about 55 it's got uh, adjustable suspension 10 inch wheels and uh, the interior is uh, modified as well it's uh, it's an aftermarket dash center console and armrest this is a uh, a resto mod it's not an original and i wanted to modify the car just slightly but keep the originality of the car hey what's up guys and uh, welcome to another video Today we're doing a bit of an oddball review. I don't typically review cars like this, but uh, as you can see, we're here in Kelvin's 1971 Mini Cooper. I mean, how can you not look at this car and just smile? It's a classic. Everyone knows what the Mini Cooper is. This is not the first generation, but you know, it's still one of the 1970s classics. This is only the second right-hand drive car I've ever driven. The first one being the, uh, the Nissan Skyline. But this is a very different experience. This car, as tiny as it looks on the outside, the inside is actually quite spacious. Yeah, Fenton, I've, I've had four adults in this car before, and it was pretty comfortable was it? for the people even in the back. And this car was actually designed for a family of four uh, to go on road trips and vacations. So a little more info on this car, it's a 1971 Mini Cooper, um, but you swapped in a one point, what was that almost 1.3? Almost 1.3, and it was just bored out with new pistons. Okay. And uh, header, aftermarket carburetor, ignition, and exhaust. When you consider this car only weighs 1,500 pounds, then you realize the power to weight ratio is actually not that bad. Yeah, you mentioned earlier, that it puts a smile on your face. One of the reasons I really enjoy the car is because whenever I drive it, people are always smiling yeah. whenever they see oh, it. Oh, I can imagine. And it doesn't matter if it's a five-year-old kid or you know a 75-year-old woman, people smile, they take pictures, they take video, they follow me, and they stop me at the gas station, and we always have great conversations. Uh, people will say they had this car when they lived in England, or their, their family had this car, or they had one when they were in the service. So there's a lot of uh, history behind the car. So driving impressions so far, um, the unassisted brakes take some getting used to, I gotta say. You really have to uh, stomp on the pedal, pedal pretty hard to get this car slowed down. But the pedal placement, I have to say, is made for very small people, or I guess people with very small feet. Other than that, it's fairly easy to drive. It's a four-speed manual transmission uh, with synchros, so I don't have to try double clutching for the first time in my life, which I'm not really that keen to try right now. now let's push the car a little harder here and see how it handles. two or three seconds earlier than I would in a, a modern car. But that just adds to the, the appeal of this thing. I mean, just driving it at 50% at of its capability is just a riot. I mean, 
you feel everything through the car. There's no kind of sound deadening or anything like that. The car's super light, handles well. And then, you know, with the unassisted steering, you feel everything. It's it's a bit heavy, but when it, when it loads up really nicely and you can really feel exactly what the front tires are doing. And uh, the throttle response, despite only having about 100 horsepower at most, is actually really good. It revs up really nicely and quickly. You mentioned the brakes being difficult to stop the car. Can you imagine? The, this car has upgraded Cooper S front disc brakes. Does it really? Originally, it used to have four-wheel drums. Oh, wow. And you would stand on that gas, <laughs> you know, that, that uh, brake pedal for a good 10 seconds before the car came to a stop. That's pretty hilarious. <laughs> adjustable suspension okay. with uh, what they aftermarket coil. Uh, this car originally came with rubber cones as the suspension. Interesting. And uh, those wore out really quickly and, and they, they didn't do a great job, but um, some engineers manufactured an aftermarket coil system for this car and you can upgrade it to a, a fully adjustable height uh, suspension, so I can I can get out and, and raise the car up or lower the car okay. as desired. So it's got a coilover setup. Basically. Correct. I find myself braking more often than accelerating on the <laughs> downhill here. I love the smells that this car produces too. Yeah, it's got that good old carbureted smell. The smell of gas. Oh yeah. You know, as cutesy and tiny as this car is on the outside, the ironic part is that it makes me feel like a man when I drive it. <laughs> I mean, other than the synchronized transmission, there's really nothing in this car that really helps you. If you mess up, then it's all on you. And no airbag. And no airbags, <laughs> oh my god, that's a good point. That's full throttle in third gear. <laughs> makes a really cool sound, but uh, you don't really accelerate all that much yeah there's things you can do with these cars to get a ton of horsepower like dropping in a, a Honda VTEC motor oh twin my cam, God, that'd be crazy which will get you about over 200 horsepower yeah there's people that drop in uh, twin cam uh, heads with dual carburetor dual rubber carburetors which gets you a lot of power as well there's a supercharger uh, kit for this car as well, Is there really? as well as the turbo kit, which will get you more horsepower. I think uh, Mighty Car Mods, I don't know if you follow that channel, but they did a classic mini build, probably, okay. I think earlier this year, maybe last year, and they supercharged the motor in it. I don't remember how much power it made, but they had yeah. a blast with that thing. Yeah, really, I mean, if you can get 150 horsepower, that'd be perfect. That's pretty darn good. Pretty much 10 pounds of curb weight per horsepower is is a great number yeah that's all you need push it in that's oh, push it yeah. Uh, yeah there you go all right <laughs> oh that sounds awesome so what are your future plans for this car do you plan to just keep it the way it is for this car yeah i plan to keep it the way it is i was thinking about maybe upgrading the engine a little bit and putting on a either a supercharger or a turbo okay. or a twin cam but i decided you know what it's it's fine the way it is it's done and I can just drive it and enjoy it. It's it's always a happy day yeah. driving this car. Well, thank you so much, Kelvin, My for pleasure. Uh, letting me drive your 1971 Mini. Um, we got a left-hand drive example over here that uh, I am equally as excited to try out. So let's go take that one for a spin. My very first car was a 62, uh, Mini 850 that uh, my dad uh, gave to me several years after or a couple of years after I owned two uh, Minis, a 62 and a 64 Mark I Minis, but they're all 850. Hi, my name is Mario and uh, this is my 1968 uh, Mini Cooper. Um, I bought this a couple of years ago. Uh, what I've done with the engine is we, I modified it to a 1300 uh, engine lighten the flywheels, put a Weber carburetor, 
suspensions is all adjustable, shocks are adjustable. I like it because it's nimble, because of the pennions, they, they say it's like a, a go-kart, uh, drives like a go-kart. Uh, it really good on turns. It's not that fast, but uh, believe me, I can, I, I can get you in, on, on curves or turns. Alright guys, so now we are in Mario's 1968 Mini Cooper. Obviously, this one is left-hand drive, and uh, it's a 5-speed, so it's something I'm, I'm a bit more used to. Um, but there are other few key differences as well. This has a different engine than Calvin's car, right? Correct. So it's a 1.3 liter. It also produces around close to 100 horsepower, maybe? Yes. Uh -huh. uh, but it's got Weber carburetors, you said, right? It is a Weber carburetor. It's a DOC, DOIC uh, 40. So how long have you had this car? I had this one for around three years now. Only three years. Okay. Yeah. So what I did when I got this one, I I tried to change to a light and flywheel, I tried to change the head into an aluminum head with okay. a bigger bulk. So that gives me a little uh, advantage. I assume this is not your daily driver. Uh, no, I use this uh, like well, once a week or a week. twice in every month. Hit it, Panda. Hit it. I'm gonna wait till we get to oh, that yeah, little street there's... park. Yeah. There's a part here that I like to go fast. Oh, okay.
allows you to push yourself as a driver yeah. to become a better driver yeah. instead of just relying on the car to do everything for you. I mean, that's pretty obvious. I mean, this is an old car. It doesn't Correct. have any driver aids, right. but still, I mean, this car is is a lot of fun to drive. Kelvin's feels a little bit more refined. Um, there's not as many squeaks and rattles in the car. The throttle response is more linear. But then this car is just so much faster. In terms of the brakes, give you a lot more confidence. The shorter gear ratios let you stay in the power man. And the engine feels just as powerful, if not a little bit more powerful than it is. Even when you're going, say, 50 miles per hour, you feel like you're going 80. Just because the car is giving you... It's low. It's low, you see everything at the front. You feel everything through the seat, through your fingertips. Um, it's just a sensory overload. The sound. You know, you're, you're, you're exactly what, you know, that's that's exactly what I am. I, I'd like to enjoy the car. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's no nothing wrong with either approach. I think they're both very valid. Uh -huh. um, but I gotta say, but minis, that's where it's at. You don't have to go spend 50 grand on a Porsche. Just Absolutely. spend 9 to 12 grand on a Mini and you'll have just as much fun. Absolutely. Well, thanks guys again for watching this video. This is a pretty special treat. I'm excited to drive a lot more classic cars in the future. If you like my channel, please comment and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.